Hey everyone, welcome to this video about lists. Now there are three different kinds of lists that we can create in HTML, and all lists are considered block level elements. Whereas before you can't put a block level element inside of a paragraph, you can put a list which is a block level inside of another list which is a block level element. So essentially lists can be nested or children of other lists. So our three kinds of lists that we can use is the unordered list, which has no predefined order to it, an ordered list, which has a very defined order to it, and a description list, which is based on name and value pairs. For this demonstration, I'm still working off of the week four demo that's in Blackboard underneath the read folder if you would like to follow along. So underneath the paragraph about Google Chrome, I'm going to add an additional subheading or an H3, and I'm going to name this advantages. And underneath that, I'm going to create my unordered list element. Now, because an unordered list is comprised of many list items, I'm going to select enter right away, which will allow me to insert list items as children. We do that by using the li element or list item element. So I'll type in li, and because it's a child to the unordered list, notice how it's nested in four spaces. For every list item that we have in our list, we're going to need each one to be in their own list item element. So our first one is, it loads and displays pages very quickly. I'll need to create a new list item for the next one. So you can have multiple tabs displaying different information. And another list item for our third one, Google Chrome is easy to use. Notice how on our page, the unordered list is displaying with a round circle for each list item. Because it's an unordered list, it doesn't matter what order I display my list items. It wouldn't matter if Google Chrome is easy to use was my first list item. It wouldn't change the meaning of the list at all. So that's an example of an unordered list. So now let's create an ordered list. We're going to create another subheading, and because it has no more prominence or importance than the advantages subheading, and it is a subheading of Google Chrome, then this one is going to also be an H3. This one's going to be how to clear the cache. Only instead of a UL for unordered list, I'll create an OL for an ordered list. And just like before, an ordered list has to have list items, so I'm going to select enter, and I'll start with my first list item. Now for each list item in my list, I do have to have a separate list item opening and closing tag. So the first one is on your Android phone or tablet, open the Chrome app. I'll create a new list item to insert each additional one. And the next one's going to be at the top right, tap more. Notice that in this case, our ordered list, instead of having little circles, has numbers on it, meaning that this is a list that's in a sequential order. Let's continue by adding all of the rest of these list items. The third one is tap history, then clear browsing data. For more room, I'm going to scroll up just a little bit so we have a little more extra space to work with. I'm going to insert my fourth one, which is at the top. Choose a time range to delete everything, select all time. So my last two list items are next to cookies and site data and cached images and files. Check the boxes. And then the last one is tap clear data. Let's add those last two list items. So through all of this, you notice that the numbered list appeared in the browser in the preview pane. And because it's a sequential list, I can't just pick up any one of my list items and move it to a new location in my list because then I'm going to change the meaning of our ordered data. For example, I can't pick up tap clear data and move it to the very top of our list and have this make sense. If I did that, then tap clear data is the first item in our to do and the rest of it won't make sense. So having an ordered list makes sure that we're using something that's sequential. We can't rearrange the items without changing the meaning. Let's put that back at the bottom. All right, the last list that I'm going to cover in this video is called the description list. And this list type is very beneficial for using what we call key and value pairs. Now, this is a concept you're going to encounter a lot in program. Essentially, it's used to refer to a combination that needs to be together. Examples of key value pairs that you're probably already familiar with questions and answers, terms and definitions, like states and capital cities. So underneath our how to clear the cache subheading, we're going to create a third subheading, which has no more or less prominence or importance than the first two subheadings that we made. So it's also going to be an H3. But because it's a subheading of Google Chrome, it needs to be displayed inside of the Google Chrome article. So I'll put in an H3. 
and this time, frequently asked questions. Now with a description list, we're looking at DL. I'll select the tab button and return. And here's where I'm going to start entering in the two pieces of information that we're going to need in our lists. The first one is the DT or description term. It's a child of the description list, and this is the key that we'll start with. So our first one is gonna say, what are Google Chrome extensions? And because our description term needs to have a value that matches it, we're going to insert what's called a DD or description definition right below our term. And this one is going to say, Google Chrome extensions are applications that run inside the Chrome browser and provide additional functionality integration with third-party websites or services, and customized browsing experiences. Notice the default behavior of our description terms and our description definitions in our page. Let me scroll our preview pane up just a little bit so that we can kind of line these up a little. There we go. You can see that our frequently asked questions subheading displays just like every other subheading that we have inside of our Google Chrome article. And then our description term is followed by a definition that's indented slightly as if to give it further definition or further visual representation that that definition belongs with that term. Now those are the three lists that we have inside of HTML. And if you have any questions about this content, please don't hesitate to ask.